Hey guys, what's going on? My name is Hamish Holder and we are back with another video. Today we are doing my investment portfolio for the month of November 2018. Uh, this is a highly, highly requested video, so I hope you guys enjoy this one. Um, and we'll do a little bit of a different structure than in the past. Uh, this time we're, we're, what we're gonna do is we're gonna start off with my holdings um, and I'll go through what each of the positions I have in the stock market are and what percentage they make up, etc., etc. We'll go through each of the holdings and talk about their performance over the past month. And then we'll talk about what I'm specifically doing in the markets at the moment. Am I looking to make any investments? And if so, what buy prices on what stocks? Um, have I been making any trades? Uh, and what is some of the news surrounding some of the stocks that I hold in my portfolio and some of the stocks that I've been looking to invest in. So that's what you can expect from today's video. If you do enjoy the video, make sure you drop a like. Uh, and if you're new around here and you haven't already, make sure you hit subscribe, join the team and hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on any of the future notifications for these videos. But for now, let's jump into it. Just before we get started, I have an exciting announcement from Stake Trading, which is the trading platform that I use for my public portfolio in my YouTube stock portfolio series. Stake Trading just released their brand new Android app, which is super exciting. And to celebrate, anyone who signs up using my referral code today will earn themselves $20 free trading credit. So that's anyone who signs up before midnight on the 28th of November, Australian Eastern Standard Time, uh, will earn themselves $20 trading credit. So here's exactly what you need to do in order to take advantage of this offer. You need to sign up to stake today, that's on the 28th of November, Australian Eastern Standard Time, using my referral code during the sign up process. The code is on screen and also in the description below if you want to copy and paste it. Then you must also fund your account today via card, poly or transfer from stake AUD to your USD wallet. That's really important. So you must transfer into your USD wallet and it must be done today in order to receive your $20 free trading credit. If you haven't heard of stake trading before, they're a brokerage free trading platform that allows Australians to purchase US equities from Australia with zero brokerage and with as little as $50. So if you're a beginner and just getting started, stake can be a great way to start your investing journey. Just to be completely transparent, for every single person who signs up using my referral code, they will receive $20 free credit and I will also receive $20 free credit, which I'm going to be using to fund and increase the size of my public portfolio for my YouTube portfolio series. All right, so let's start off this video by talking about my holdings. And I wanna start by talking about my asset allocation. So what assets am I holding and in what percentages? And essentially from the beginning of this portfolio up until now, I've always had two different types of assets, that being cash and equities. And if you wanna get a little bit more specific, I hold cash and I also hold US equities and Australian equities. Last month when I made the last video, I had cash of 42% and equities of 48%. And since then, in the last month, nothing really has changed. I now have 40% in cash and 60% in equities. There's really two main reasons why nothing changed here. The first is that the equity positions went down because of this recent correction in the stock market. Most stocks have been going down in the last month, so that makes sense. And the second reason is that I actually took some cash out of my portfolio to invest in my personal business. So what I thought I'd do now is go through each of the holdings in my portfolio, talk about how big they are and their recent performance, and then talk about what my intentions are with each of these stocks. Am I going to be adding to their position? Am I going to be reducing their position? And what are the price targets that I'm targeting for some of these positions and that sort of thing. So I thought that's what we would do for this video. Let me know if you enjoy this kind of video uh, down in the comment section below. But the first stock that I have in my portfolio, this is the smallest position uh, in my portfolio, and that is NAB stock. So that's a National Australian Bank. So this stock makes up 5.4% of my portfolio, which is actually up from 4.9% last month. Um, and in terms of the performance for the last month, it's actually down 1.4%. There's nothing really interesting that's happening with this stock or really anything interesting to say. Um, the reason that I hold this stock is because I bought it a long time ago when I was just getting into investing um, because it pays such a good div dividend. Uh, it pays about an 8% dividend. So that's pretty much why I'm just holding it. Um, I have no intention of adding to it because financial companies are very complex and now using the strategy that I implement now and that I have been implementing for the last year, um, I wouldn't invest in a company like NAB, um, but I'm just gonna hold on to it because I bought it so, so long ago um, and I'll just let the dividends reinvest and see how it grows over the very long term. But I really have no intentions of touching it whatsoever 
anytime soon. So the second stock we've got here is YY, and this stock makes up about 6.6% of my portfolio, which is up from 5.8% uh, a month ago. Um, and in terms of performance, this stock has performed the best in the last month out of all the stocks in my portfolio. It's done 13.32%, which is really, really impressive. And that's basically off the back of, well, I think it's off the back of reducing fears around China and these tariffs, as well as the strength of the US dollar. There was a while there where the US dollar was getting really, really strong, and now it's sort of plateaued. Um, so we'll wait to see where the US dollar moves and see how it affects international equities. In terms of the company's performance, as of the last financial report, their revenue was up 33% and their equity from a year ago is up 63% year over year. So that's pretty insane. Um, and I think as long as the company continues to perform as it has or, or somewhere near as it has, um, there is a lot of upside for this company as it's trading at a forward PE of just eight. So you've got a company that's growing its core value by 63% year over year, and it's trading at an eight multiple to its earnings. So it's pretty impressive. And I think there is a lot of upside potential for a company like YY. However, of course, this is a speculative position for a couple of reasons. One, it's a foreign investment. So I don't understand China completely. Um, and I don't understand the environment in which it operates completely. So for that reason, um, I'm keeping it as a small position. And also it's a high growth, brand new, internet company in a changing environment. So for those reasons, I won't be investing large amounts of money. In fact, I have no intention of adding to this position at all, despite it being down quite a lot. Um, I just think of it as a small part of my portfolio that has a ton of upside if the market finally realizes its true value. The next stock we have is Facebook. Now, Facebook makes up 8.3% of my portfolio and that is up from 8.2%. So no real change uh, in terms of the size or the proportion of my portfolio, which is made up by Facebook. Uh, in terms of the performance of Facebook in the last month, the stock is down 7.3%. Um, and I think this is just because there's continued short-term concerns about regulation. Uh, Facebook and Zuckerberg and some of the executives are now going and testifying in multiple countries um, in order to sort of talk about the regulations around safety and security on platforms like Facebook. So there's that, as well as just the, the worries and concerns about slowing growth in the business. So those things are just dragging the stock down in the short term. Nothing to worry about over the long-term performance of the company, I think at least. I mean, we're talking about a massive company, huge brand on it, has a ton of cash, I think over 100 billion in cash, uh, and they have a very, very competent management team. Um, and that's a really, really great combination for a company that's gonna perform great over the long term, as long as you buy it at the right price. For Facebook, I actually am looking to invest more into Facebook. I do wanna build it out to a bigger position, um, but I'm going to be doing that over the next few years and I'm not rushing into that um, because it is still quite a young company, a still a quite high growth company. So I definitely want to get it uh, with really conservative valuation. So when I'm doing my modeling and making a assumptions. I want to be really, really conservative. And if the price falls that far, then I will happily make an investment. Um, so I thought I'd just give you a little bit of an example of sort of some of the assumptions I might make. These aren't the assumptions that I am making for Facebook in my specific models. Um, but this is an example of sort of the ballpark region that I would personally be looking to invest in Facebook. So if we assume 12% growth for the next five years, that's 12% each year, and we assume that we can sell it at a PE ratio of 25, with a margin of safety that gives us a fair value of $130 per share, and that would give us a buy price of about $65 per share, which is about a 50% discount from where the stock price is currently. So that's a long way off from where the current stock price is, but that's just sort of an example of where I would be very, very happy uh, to invest large amounts of money into Facebook stock because I think that uh, with very confident, I, I think very confidently I could say that they could achieve 12% per year over five years. They could probably do 12% per year over 20 years. Um, but again, it's a it's a company in an environment that is a, it's a high change environment um, and anything can happen. So I like to look out over five years instead of 10 years or 20 years because I really don't know what are gonna be the big social media platforms in 10 years time. Could be completely different. Um, but over a five year period, I think it's pretty safe to say that something like a Facebook with $100 billion in cash 
and a very, very competent management team, I think they can achieve somewhere in the ballpark of 10 to 12% growth over the next five years. My next biggest position in the stock market is my index fund that tracks the ASX 300. So that index fund is VAS, Vanguard Australian Shares Index. Uh, and that gives you just a little piece of all of the top 300 companies in Australia. And uh, as of today, that index fund makes up 16.6% on my portfolio, and that's up from 14.7% uh, a month ago. The index is down about 0.43% in the last month, so nothing's really changed, and there's really nothing to say here. Um, I'm just continuously adding to this and keeping it at around 15 to 25% of my portfolio, so I have that safe foundation uh, that's just invested in basically the Australian economy, um, but there's nothing really to say here. So let's move on to the next one. So that brings us to my last investment in the stock market. And that is, of course, Thor Industries, my biggest position. Uh, and this one currently makes up 23.4% of my portfolio, which is actually down from 24.4%. So that shrunk slightly. Um, and actually, I thought that Thor Industries stock price was continuing to fall. Um, but in the last month, the stock price is actually up. So the stock price is up 4.5% in the last month, which is really impressive. Um, and nothing has really happened for Thor Industries in the last month. We're just going to be waiting for that next quarterly earnings report um, where we can see how much of an impact the Erwin Heimer acquisition will have on their earnings and to see what, what sort of uh, trouble they're having with margins. Because as, as you would know, they're having trouble with these margins because of increased costs uh, driven mostly from uh, these aluminium tariffs because aluminium and steel are used widely uh, in the caravans or the RVs that Thor Industries makes. However, this acquisition that they recently made is definitely a positive thing for Thor Industries because instead of most of their revenue coming out of the US, they now have control of 30% of Europe's RV market, which means that their revenue is diversified a lot more. Uh, and it means that if their margins in the US are gonna get hurt significantly, it won't impact the broader business as much as it would if they were just concentrated in the US. For Thor Industries, I am also looking to add to the position and the range that I'm really looking to invest another big chunk of money into Thor Industries is really around the 45 to $55 range. And I thought what I would do is I'd go through all all of my valuation methods. I've got three different methods that I use. Uh, and these are the three methods that Phil Town also uses. Um, and I'll show you why that's the range that I'm looking to make my next investment and what kind of assumptions I'm using. Uh, and you'll see that it's very, very conservative. Um, and it, the, the stock at, at that price between 45 and $55 easily meets all of the requirements of it being a buy. So we'll start off with the margin of safety method. And essentially I've used a growth estimate of 8% per year for the next 10 years. Uh, their equity growth rate for the past 25 years has been 14%. And from the peak before the GFC until now, they've grown equity at 8%. So I think that 8% is a pretty conservative growth rate for the next 10 years. I've also used a PE estimate of about 20. Historically, their PE has bounced between 10 and 20, depending on the economic optimism. So I wouldn't be so it wouldn't be unrealistic to assume that we could sell for in 10 years time at a PE of 20. I'm also assuming a 1.5% dividend each and every year year, which is very conservative considering if their stock price was $50 per share, the dividend yield right now would be 3%. And if we use all of those assumptions, we get a buy price of $50. So that explains why the margin of safety method is satisfied at that $50 price point with some pretty conservative growth numbers going forward for Thor Industries. Next, we have the payback time method, which is using a free cash flow growth rate of 8%. And we're also using the free cash flow from 2018, which remember doesn't include the Irwin Heimer acquisition, which will probably add somewhere between 20 and 50% to their cash flow. And using those very conservative assumptions, we get a payback time of just 6.1 years, which compared to the average for private businesses, if you're buying an entire private business, you're likely to pay about eight times, or you're gonna have a payback time of eight years. And lastly, we have the 10 cap method, which uses owner's earnings. So owner's earnings from 2018 for Thor Industries was 426 million. Again, this does not include the Erwin Heimer acquisition, which is probably going to add about 20 to 50% to this owner's earnings number. But if we use that number and we assume that the stock price falls to $50 per share, that would give us a cap rate of 16%. So that would be a 16 cap, which is well above the 10 cap 
sort of 10% minimum requirement and 16% is an insane return to be getting on a stock in terms of owner's earnings. So lastly, I thought we'd just go through the portfolio performance as a whole and we'll break it down into three sections. So we've got capital gains, we've got dividends, and then we've got currency gains. And those three will add together to give us our overall return for the last month. So in terms of capital gains, we had a capital loss of 0.21%. We had dividends coming in at 0.5% and then we had a currency loss of 1.4%. So overall, that gives us a return of negative 1.12% for, uh, for the last one month. And just for comparison's sake, the S&P 500 in that time lost 0.33% and the ASX 500 or the All Ordinaries uh, lost about 1.1%. So I slightly underperformed the markets in the last month, but of course, I don't really care about short-term movements. Uh, in fact, I don't really care about unrealized gains at all because what I really care about is in 10 years time over the long term, when I start to sell these investments, what is the realized gains that I'm making on these positions? That's what I really care about. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And if you did, make sure you leave a like and let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. Of course, if you're not a subscriber yet, what are you doing? Hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on any of the videos coming out in the future. But I hope you guys have a great day and make sure you check out that stake promotion. It's a really great deal, especially if you haven't signed up to stake before. $20 free credit, so make sure you do that. Link down in the description below. But I hope you guys have a great day and I'll see you in the next one.